Did you know that there's one filter in the Nick collection that I use for almost every image I edit? Can you guess what it is? Hello, I'm Robin Worley and welcome to Lenscraft. In this video, I'm going to share possibly the most important filter in the entire Nick collection. And if you're still trying to guess what it is, let me narrow it down by saying that it's part of Nick Color Effects Pro. Now while you're thinking, let's get back to the starting image that I'm going to use to demonstrate this filter. I've already converted this image from a RAW file using DXL Photo Lab and I have it open in Photoshop. And if you prefer to use the Nick Collection in Affinity Photo, you can do exactly the same thing there. My first step is to launch Nick Color Effects Pro. As I'm in Photoshop, I'll click the Color Effects Pro link in the Nick Selective toolbar. When Color Effects Pro opens, I can see my image loaded in the preview and the filter library over on the left. You can filter this library using the buttons at the top, but I tend to use it with the All setting to list all filters. I then select my essential filter by clicking it in the list. As I doubt you've guessed it, it's the Pro Contrast filter, but there's a little bit more to it than just adding this single filter. Once I've added the filter, you'll see the controls over on the right side of the interface. The first control at the top is used to correct any colour cast in the image, and it's this that first got me started using the filter so much. Often I'd correct an image in the raw conversion process, but then there'd still be some sort of faint colour tint. This filter made removing it remarkably easy, but sometimes you do need an extra step, which is what I'll go over in the demo later. When I move the slider to the right, you can see the effect which becomes stronger the further I move it. The next slider is called Correct Contrast, but it would probably be better to call it Increase Contrast. When I move this to the right, you see the image contrast increases. Do be careful when you're using this though, because it can cause clipping in the brightest and darkest areas of the image. If we look at the histogram at the bottom, you can see that it's now clipping. The final slider is the Dynamic Contrast slider, which adds local contrast to the scene. I find that it's a great way to open dark shadows in an image. When I move this to the right, the effect on the foreground becomes obvious. Unfortunately, it's also affecting the clouds in this scene, giving them a bit too much structure. When used properly though, these three sliders can make a huge difference to almost any image, which is what we'll look at next. Let's start by fixing the slight orange colour cast in the image. When I move the slider to the far right, you can see that it cleans up the blue in the sky. It also has a nice effect on the yellow grass in the foreground, and from the area around the sun. These all appeared to be a little bit too orange to me, but the correct colour cast sliders removed all this. But unfortunately, it's also having an unwanted effect on areas like the rock in the foreground. The way I can prevent this is by adding a control point to select where the corrections applied. I'll start by setting the slider at around 80% to help me see the effect. I can always reduce it later once I've added the control point if it still appears too strong. Now I'll add a positive control point by clicking the plus icon and then clicking on the area I want to select. For this image I'll start with the blue sky on the left. When I add the control point, it hides the filter effect from the entire image, except for the area selected by that control point. Now I'll add another control point to the blue area on the other side of the sky. After that, I'll add a third positive control point to select the yellow grass on the right side of the frame. Then finally, a fourth control point to the area of the sun on the left. If I expand the control point list, you can see the four control points. You can see what each one's selecting by clicking the tick box to the right of that control point. If I click on the icon at the top of the list, we can see the combined mask for all the control points. The white areas are what's selected by the control points and therefore has the colour correction applied. But the black mask areas are protected from this and so they don't change. Now despite what you might hear, these control points aren't very precise, so they also select areas around them to help blend adjustments. Notice in this example that the areas in the field and the lichens on the rocks are also being selected. To protect these, I can add a negative control point which hides the colour corrections in those areas. I just click the negative control point icon and then click on the field. I'll then add another control point to protect the brown of the heather. Then finally, I'll protect the lichens on the rock. 
If I click the compare button at the top of the screen, you can see the filters remove the orange tint from most of the scene. What we're left with is a much nicer, more natural yellow colour. With the colour corrected now, I want to use the dynamic contrast adjustment to open up the foreground. Unfortunately, if I try to do that using the current filter, it doesn't work because of the control points I applied. The way around this is to add another Pro Contrast filter. The ability to use the same filter multiple times on an image is often overlooked by a lot of NIC users. It means we can select different areas to adjust with a different slider. For this filter, let's increase the dynamic contrast slider to 75%. You can see that it's having a strong effect on the image, but it looks best on the foreground rock and grasses. As before, let's start with a positive control point and use it to select the lichens on the rock. I'll also resize the control point so that the effect spreads to the lichens on nearby rocks as well. This works well, but it leaves the rock looking a little bit flat on the left side. I'll therefore add a control point to select that area of the rock to apply the dynamic adjustment to. Then I'll add a control point to select the grasses and the dark areas in the scene. If I use the compare button, you can see the different the adjustments have made to the image. Just remember that the compare button hides the effects of both of our filters. If I only want to hide the second Pro Contrast filter, I need to click the tick box to the left of the title to turn it off and on. Now I can see how the filter is affecting the clouds, which I don't want. I'll therefore protect them by adding negative control points. This time, rather than trying to enlarge the control point to select the entire sky, let's duplicate it instead. I can do this by holding down my Option key and then clicking and dragging the control point. If you're using a Windows PC, that's your Alt key. Having added negative control points, let's check the effect of this filter on the image. This is looking good, but let's now try the correct contrast adjustment. I'll do this by adding a third Pro Contrast filter. Then, if I increase the correct contrast slider to around 30%, you can see that it's having a strong effect across the entire image. In this example, it's a little too strong, so I'll reduce it to around 10%. Now I'm going to go back to the first Pro Contrast filter, because I want to check the effect of the correct contrast slider on that. Remember, this was the filter we used to correct the colour cast in certain areas. When I increase the correct contrast slider, you can see that it also boosts the colour and the contrast. The second filter was used to open up the shadows in the foreground. Again, increasing the correct contrast slider to 20% gives those areas a colour boost. If we now click the compare button, you can see the difference these filters have made to the starting image. This is why I consider the Pro Contrast filter in Nick Color Effects Pro to be absolutely essential. When I started using this filter properly as I've demonstrated in this video, it made a big improvement to my work. But there are a few other essential techniques to learn, which is why I recommend watching this video next. In it, I demonstrate four techniques to make detail pop and enhance the colours in your image using the Nick Collection. If you've enjoyed today's video, please take a moment to share it with others. Thanks for watching.